Mock Rides is one of the most prominent amusement ride manufacturers in the industry. They also happen to date back to 1780 when they got started doing things like horse carriages. Now, here in the 21st century, they are creating a huge variety of attractions. Today, I'm going to be specifically focusing on their roller coasters, what I believe to be their best attractions that they have put out there that I personally have experienced. Because this is a worldwide company, they do have tons of products all across the globe, some of which I would love to experience. Just within the past decade alone, they've really come out with probably some of their most innovative attractions. They've put a lot of emphasis on their launch coasters and just in general doing more extreme elements. It's really cool to see how this company has changed and evolved over the years, and I'm excited to see where they keep going. But as for this video, let's dive in. At the number 10 attraction, we actually have a set of multiple attractions, and that's because they are just so similar that I've just clumped them all into one, and that is the bobsled. This includes rides like Avalanche at King's Dominion, Avalanche at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, Schweizer Bobon at Europa Park and Haida Park, and there are a couple more out there. But what's cool about these rides is this essentially takes a away the actual track. Instead, you're riding in a trough. It's still very much a roller coaster, but it just creates a very unique sensation. You ride it like you would an actual bobsled. And that's why I think they're such neat attractions just because of how different they are. It's a shame there aren't more out there. It, they kind of seem like a dying breed of a ride, but they're always a lot of fun. No steep drops or anything, just a lot of rapid fire transitions, but always good fun. At the number nine spot, we have Cobra's Curse at Busch Gardens Tampa. Now, what I like about this ride is just of how unique it is. This is not just an ordinary family spinning coaster. I mean, in addition to having some amazing theming and landscaping, you got an elevator lift, a forward section, a backward section, and then you end with your spinning section. I know there's some people that are kind of underwhelmed by this ride, and I understand that, but when you really look at it as a family ride. I mean, this could be a kid's first big roller coaster. This really is an excellent attraction. It does exactly what it was meant to do. And number eight, we're stepping it up a little bit. We have Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. This is the first multi-launch coaster to make this list. And don't get me wrong, this is still a family ride, not too extreme or anything, but I really like what they did here. This was like the first big roller coaster for this park. And they went for a type of experience that just about anyone could ride and enjoy. There's lots of great transitions here you're diving in and out of different theming elements, staying low to the ground. Everything about this ride just puts a smile on your face. And presentation wise, it just looks great visually. Now, number seven, we have what is probably the most different ride on this list. It's still fairly new. There aren't too many of these out there. And this was the first one. It is Arthur at Europa Park. Now, what is this ride exactly? Because when you look at this footage, it really doesn't give you the full picture. All of what you see is the outdoor section, which is the most roller coaster section of it. But a lot of this ride is indoors and really focuses on the theming and storytelling. So in a way, this ride almost feels more dark ride than roller coaster. It's really a cool blend between the two. And actually, you can really see that with some of the other models that they have put out, like you have Dragon Gliders over in the Emirates, and Universal Studios Beijing is getting one when that park opens, and that is themed to Jurassic World, which is awesome. But as of right now, Arthur is the only one of its kind that I have experienced, and it really just blew me away. I mean, it's a very tame ride, but just the technology behind it and the concept was so cool that I just had to put it in the top 10, absolutely. But just one spot ahead of it is another ride in the same park, Nez Blue Fire Mega coaster at Europa Park. This was basically Mock's first big roller coaster. And they did a lot of things right with it. And you can tell because they have put a lot of clones of this ride all across the globe. So absolutely, when I put Blue Fire at the number six spot, I'm not just talking about Blue Fire specifically, I'm talking about all of the different clones that they have out there. This is not a multi-launch coaster, there's just the one, but you got a variety of high banking turns, multiple inversions. In this case, there's lots of rock work. It's extremely smooth. It's not a very intense experience, but a lot of the rides on this list are not. What's interesting about many of Mach's big roller coasters is they'll include some really cool, crazy elements, but many of them aren't overkill with the positive G-forces or anything. I wouldn't say really any of the rides on this list are super intense which is fine. I mean, they found their niche. But anyways, this was really the first ride that kind of propelled them into doing all of the other rides that you will see in the rest of this video. And that starts with the number five attraction, which I have as Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now, this is one of the newer multi-launch coasters. And really what I think the impressive thing about this ride is just how they managed to squeeze this into such a tight and narrow space. Because if you've been to Blackpool, they are very much landlocked. They have to fight to find space for a new ride. And every Everything about Icon just 
fits in this park. It doesn't look out of place or anything. It was exactly what they needed. It's a great, just fun experience. And just in general, really something that the UK as a whole needed. Next up is a bit of an odd attraction. This is Lost Gravity at Wallaby Holland. Now, Mach has only done, I believe, two Big Dipper rides, and this is one of them. This was the first. They have another one called Dynamite, which I personally have not yet experienced. What they took here was a very small car, almost like a Eurofighter. This almost feels like Mach's answer to Gerstlauer's Eurofighter model, because they just have the two rows, four across, lots of really tight maneuvers, some fun airtime pops, some inversions. It's a really cool experience and Wallaby Holland put some great theming around it. This was really a roller coaster that I underestimated and was a lot better than I was expecting. I'd love to see more of these rides out there. So now we made it to our top three. At number three, we have Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. Now Mach's presence in the US as far as big roller coasters is fairly limited. This was the latest and greatest attraction that they built in America. To this day, it's really the only one of its kind in this part of the world. And this was a perfect attraction for Carowinds. I mean, they needed a really fun inverting multi-launch coaster and boy did they get it. A lot of people were drawing comparisons to like Maverick. Copperhead Strike has a lot of focus on hang time but also features some really great airtime moments. And I feel like the park really just went above and beyond with theming this ride. It's really some of the best theming that we've seen in the chain. I love how this coaster turned out and I think it'd be very cool to see a few more of these pop up out there. But I don't think it lays a candle to our number two ride which is Helix at Lisaberg. Of their traditional multi-launch coasters I think this one is by far the best. It is a crazy terrain coaster, definitely inversion heavy, it flips you upside down seven times. There are two launches, which personally the launches don't really do a whole lot for me here. Just in general, Mox launches are fairly gradual, not forceful or anything. So I try to focus more on the layout itself instead of specifically the launch. But just about everything about this ride is so cool. I mean, from the moment you walk in the queue with the theming, that awesome soundtrack, flipping you upside down the moment you leave the station, and it's a really nice long experience and just location wise, it just looks stunning. But I do not think it is Mach's best roller coaster. For me, the answer is clear and that is Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. This is currently the only mock extreme spinning coaster in the world. It'll soon be one of two once Ride to Happiness opens at Plopsaland in Belgium, which that one looks very cool as well. But when this was built, we didn't really know what to expect because it'd never been done before. And I think they absolutely killed it with this concept. I want a ton of these built everywhere because they are so cool. Instead of having a free spinning attraction, they use magnets to control the spin so it's a very smooth rotation so it doesn't feel like teacups, but they incorporate these crazy elements like different inversions and launches. Oh, and did I mention a 90 degree drop straight out of the station? That part is mental. If you're riding in the back car, you get whipped over facing sideways. I've never experienced some of these elements like I have on Time Traveler just because of how you are rotating as you're going through these different moments. I think this is one of the coolest rides in the world. The theming is brilliant. The location, setting, layout, train design. For me, this is 100% the best roller coaster that Mach has ever done at least out of the ones that I have experienced. Like I mentioned, they have rides all over the world. There's a really cool one getting built in China right now. They have hyper coasters located in Turkey as well as China. I mentioned Ride to Happiness is gonna be opening soon in Belgium. I think the future of this company portfolio wise is very bright. I love seeing them branching out, doing these more extreme attractions. And it's clear whenever one of these opens, you always hear people raving about them. They're very successful with the public. So I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of them in the future. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of your favorite rides by Mach? If you're new to the channel, I'd love if you could subscribe. We do countdowns and different videos all about the amusement industry. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.